Windows 11 24H2 is thankfully packed with new features to play with. Some of these features require a Copilot Plus PC with an NPU, and these are features like auto super resolution, voice clarity, camera studio effects, and the Copilot runtime itself. I won't be demonstrating any of these in this video because my Copilot Plus PC hasn't arrived yet. But let's jump into some of the features that I can demo on a normal PC. So for example, the Windows setup, right? That's slightly different, let's look at it. So I'm gonna open up this 24H, 23H2 machine here, get that on Windows setup, and then have a look at this 24H2 machine. Just get that starting and booting from uh, disk. Not enough RAM, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, let me turn off this admin box then. I only have 64 gig in this machine and it's clearly not enough for all those machines. Right, there we go. So we are going to compare side by side. There, It is pretty different, to be honest. So on the left-hand side here, we have 24H2. On the right-hand side, we've got 23H2. The 23H2 you'll be familiar with if you've ever reset a PC or built a PC from scratch. That has been the layout and the format for many, many years now much different now and in fact you can switch back to the old in this version that i'm running now you can switch back to the old uh, version of the interface but let's run through it so i'm going to go next and i'll choose next here slight difference there but it's just the setting uh the language and now we get to choose whether i'm going to repair my pc now this actually is a completely fresh pc without an os on it so that's a bit of a confusing option but install windows 11 is a good start and i agree with deleting stuff because there's nothing on it it's literally a fresh vm but never mind. And this button here, you can see previous version of setup that when you click that, it just goes straight back to this version on the right hand side to use the old setup. So I don't know if that's going to remain in the release version of 24H2, but it's certainly here in the inside of preview version. So I'm going to go next and it asks for the product key. I don't have a product key. And thankfully that works. We can accept the terms and conditions that I've already read, obviously. And then it goes and searches for disks. This is quite similar to what happens when you're running this in the 23H2 version. This looks a little bit different. Oh, I get to choose the edition. Ah, the Insider Preview version I'm running already is just Windows 11 Enterprise. So that is why I can't choose the edition on the left hand side. But accept the terms. And oh, so we still have this option of upgrade or not. But this is the, the difference between the 23H2 and 24H2 for the uh, where do you want to install Windows section. And disk zero, unallocated space, it's all very similar from an options point of view, just slightly different layout. I choose next. And that, I think, is pretty much the only differences in this. It says ready to install. And you'll notice this, if you've ever reset a PC, this is what it looks like when you're resetting a PC. It says ready to, ready to reset or ready to install. Anyway, choose install. And that's a little bit different, right? That definitely looks different to how it looks when you're running it in 23H2 but I think it does very quickly go back to the old interface uh, after it's finished doing the initial bit. Anyway I'm not going to dwell on this the Windows setup experience is slightly different to what you get on 23H2 great I think it's an improvement it's slightly different let's see what happens with autopilot I'm going to test autopilot tomorrow so we'll see how that works so aside from that there are some massive improvements within windows uh, 24h2 for example let me show you one of them i'm going to close this down and this down uh, and open up this pc here so this uh, is a pc running windows 11 24h2 i'm just going to run winver and it is build 26 is 100 1301 it's uh, running Windows 11 Pro. It, 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 yeah, it's absolutely fine. From a stability perspective, I've been using it to demonstrate and test some things during my prep for the Academy course that I'm running soon. I wanted to show you a couple of improvements though, a couple of changes, right? Developer mode is gonna be huge, I think, for my customers certainly, where we have some developers who need much more advanced access to the PC, and we don't wanna give that to just give them full local admin and make them able to do stuff on their PC. So there's going to be a lot of stuff coming through developer mode. But one of the things I think is quite cool, if we go to settings and then down to... Uh, 
I'm going to open up settings, system, and then down to four developers. This, so we can turn on developer mode and that changes the PC completely by uh, enrolling it into the developer mode and, and that kind of thing. I'm not going to do that. I want to show you these, right? So end task. If we click to turn that on, you can now end tasks by right clicking. So oh, let me show you. Where's it gone? That's the wrong taskbar. Thing. Um, you can now right click and end task. Here we have an example of Paint being able to end the task. Usually you'd have to open up uh, Task Manager and delete it that way and remove the task that way, but you can do that now by just right clicking on it and we turn it off and you lose that option. So very well implemented, I like that. Uh, we also have File Explorer, these common settings where you have to go into File Explorer and then allow hidden items and that kind of thing. We can do that through this developer pane here, which is great and we can show a lot more information as developers might need to. When you do get into this settings page, you can see it says these settings are intended for development use only, but a lot of advanced users, I find, will be familiar with these and want these options, such as show hidden, hidden items and, and that kind of thing. So that's where they are now, uh, in, including show empty drive, that's quite important as well. So jumping down to uh, enable sudo, right? Sudo now has appeared on Windows PCs. So if I turn on sudo, I need to be admin to turn that on. But now I can run a terminal, right? I can uh, type cmd and I'm in terminal, right? So I can run uh, things like notepad. There we go. Opening up notepad. Yeah. What about if I type sudo notepad? Now I'm running notepad as admin without having to change this uh, change this command prompt to admin. That's uh, if when you're running admin tasks on a computer as an admin, you'll often be tripped up by the fact that you've accidentally opened command as a normal user and you want to run an elevated command on it, it's so much easier now to just add sudo to the start of it, like Linux has been doing, but Unix has been doing for many, many years, well, since the beginning of, uh, of Unix. So that's a massive improvement. I don't think that's just a developer thing. That is a very useful thing for most admins. Obviously a huge security risk because anyone can now simply run type sudo and elevate on, on demand, but I think that is a fantastic improvement and we'll see how good that is going to get soon uh, and then we have dev drive not going to cover dev drive just yet uh, other things so up here we have this quick settings up uh, thing here and I can show you that firstly we've got energy saver rather than battery saver because it applies to machines that are not battery powered as well so then they've changed the name to energy, energy saver and it's slightly different but it, it does do a pretty much the same thing. And you notice this little thing here, you've got two dots and a downward arrow. This means that there's two pages. This is paginated, so we can scroll down just like that and we can see we've got additional things on this bar here. I don't know whether that helps. It's different and you can scroll up and down and stuff that's pretty cool. It saves it being just bigger and bigger and bigger as more things get added, but it's different and I like it. Uh, what else? What else? Ah, well, Copilot, obviously, is a pretty big thing. I'm going to wait until I get the Copilot Plus PC to show you most of the features of Copilot. But if we just look into Paint right now, did a bit of testing earlier on, and it suggests you could run a command like uh, a cat walking in the woods. And the, very, uh, the, the responses you get are very similar to the responses you would get from any other image generator using AI. But I think they're pretty good. And the fact that it goes straight into Paint like this is, uh, is awesome. I like it. It's really good. Uh, I can't see myself starting to use paint too much more than I already do. I'm not really a paint person. I mean, you can see I'm already using a Mac, but if I do go back to using a PC when this Copilot Plus PC arrives, maybe I'll start using paint. I doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, that's that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. I think 24H2 has some massive changes coming. And a lot of them, like I say, are going to be enabled through this NPU that you get with a Copilot Plus PC. So check out the next video where I'll show you some of that, hopefully. See you next time.